Good evening, and welcome to Sports Night in Auburn. I'm Brendan McLaughlin. And I'm Mackenzie Collins. Tonight's show is full of baseball and softball recaps, soccer's win in Tuscaloosa, and more. Auburn baseball continued SEC Player of the Weekend, but fell short against Kentucky, despite scoring four runs in the ninth to force extra innings. The Tigers tied the game 6-6, but the Kentucky Wildcats scored two in the top of the tenth to win 8-6. The Tigers entered the ninth down 6-2, and the rally in the ninth started with a Cam Hill single home run, followed by a single by Ryan Bliss to score Brayton Brown. Joe Ward was then hit by a pitch scoring Stephen Williams. Rankin Woolley hit a sack fly to score Casey Howell to tie the game. Kentucky's hitters weren't done yet, scoring two to win game one. Richard Fitz was on the mound in the tenth and suffered the loss, while Kentucky pitcher Daniel Harper pitched the final five outs and recorded the win. Tyler Miller went three for four in the game and finished a triple shy of the cycle. Ryan Bliss, Stephen Williams, and Kaysen Howell racked up a pair of hits in the game. The Tigers had a doubleheader on Saturday due to the rain on Sunday, but fell in both games to Kentucky 7-6 and 6-4. In game one of the doubleheader, Kentucky got off to an early start in the top of the first with a three-run home run by TJ Collette and a solo home run by Colton Kessler. Auburn chipped away at the 4-0 lead by scoring two in the bottom of the first with a hit by Kaysen Howell and a wildcat error. Pitcher Mason Barnett finally settled in on the mound and held Kentucky scoreless for the next four innings. Barnett threw five in the third innings and struck out eight. Kentucky extended their lead to 5-2 in the sixth after an RBI double, but Auburn answered with a two-run home run from Kaysen Howell to make it 5-4. The Wildcats and Tigers continued to battle the rest of the game until Auburn ultimately fell 7-6. In the second game of the day, Kentucky jumped, to, jumped out to an early lead again with two runs in the first and another in the second inning. The Tigers fought back, scoring two in the bottom of the third. Joseph Gonzalez retired eight of the ten batters from the second through fourth innings before Kentucky extended their lead 4-2 in the fifth, which is when Auburn made a call to the bullpen and Carson Swilling stepped in, but Kentucky scored two more, making it 6-2. Judd Ward scored in the fifth, making it 6-3. The Tigers could not battle back enough to overcome the Wildcat lead and fell to Kentucky in all three games of the series. Brooks Fuller came in relief for the Tigers and pitched 2.1 scoreless innings with a pair of strikeouts. Will Morrison recorded two strikeouts, and Cam Hill pitched a perfect ninth inning with one strikeout. Auburn continues SEC play this weekend, where they will travel to number two Arkansas for a three-game series. The number 24-ranked softball team welcomed in Mizzou over the weekend and won one of the three matchups. In the first game Friday afternoon, the Tigers were tied at one until an error by Auburn allowed Mizzou to score, ending the game at 2-1. Shelby Lowe and Missouri starter Jordan Weber battled all game with both pitchers giving up solo home runs in the fourth inning. Freshman Shelby Lowe pitched a career-high seven and third innings, the most by an Auburn pitcher in a single game this season. She gave up seven hits and struck out six with no walks. Justice Perry led Auburn at the plate, going two for four on the night behind her solo home run in the fourth. Head coach Mickey Dean said, we had opportunities. Each team had a home run, each team had great pitching, each team had great defense. The difference in this game is that they moved on, moved one runner, and scored. We didn't move any. Auburn's offense found its spark in Game 2 of the Missouri series, but ultimately fell short, losing 6-5. Auburn scored four runs in the top of the third to make it a 4-1 lead, but the Missouri Tigers scored three to even the score 4-4. Auburn took the lead again in the, in the top of the fourth when Sidney Cox hit a solo home run, but Missouri battled back and scored two in the bottom of the fourth to take the 6-5 lead. Cox and Jaylee Horton combined for five hits at the top of the lineup, with Cox going two for four with their first collegiate home run. Horton went three for four at the plate. While the Tigers fell short, there were some good that came from Saturday's matchup. McKenna Dow recorded her third multi-RBI game of the season and her tenth of her career. Alyssa Rivera recorded her second multi-RBI game in the 30, 32nd of her Auburn career. Head coach Mickey Dean was proud of the top of the lineup, but but said the team just needs to be sharper overall. Shelby Law was back on the mound Sunday and led the Tigers to a 3-0 shutout win against Missouri in the series finale. The win was Auburn's first in SEC play. Lowe held Missouri to just five hits and struck out 11 while walking none. Lowe and Jordan Weber battled yet again through five innings, with Auburn striking out just four times compared to Friday 17. Auburn's bats woke up in the top of the six when Tyler King singled up the middle and Kaylee Horton and Michaela Packer scored. McKenna Dowell came up the bat soon after and singled to second base, scoring Tyler King. Freshman Shelby Lowe recorded double-digit strikeouts for the fifth time this season, 
moving her season total to 99 strikeouts. She's now tied with Renee Cease for the fifth most by an Auburn freshman. Because of her strong performance on the mound, Lowe was named D1 Softball Freshman of the Week and SEC Freshman of the Week. This honor was Lowe's second SEC recognition. An Auburn freshman has now been named SEC Freshman of the Week a record four times this season, with two for Lowe and two for fellow pitcher Maddie Penta. Lowe is the first Auburn freshman in history to be named D1 Softball Freshman of the Week. Lowe and the Auburn Tigers return to action this Thursday against Arkansas at Jane B. Moore Field at 5 p.m. on SEC Network Plus. When we come back, we will recap Auburn soccer's win in Tuscaloosa, Equestrian's SEC title win, and more. Keep it right here. You're watching Sports Night in Auburn. The Tigers traveled to Tuscaloosa over the weekend and put on a dominant offensive performance to defeat Alabama 2-1 at the Alabama Soccer Complex. Auburn came out of the game out shooting Bama 18-1 with eight shots being on target. Auburn scored in the 17th and 54th minutes to take a 2-0 lead, and Bama scored in the final 90th minute of the game. But when the final whistle blew, the Tigers were on top 2-1. The Tigers can now bring the Iron Bowl title back to the Plains as the team lost to the Tide 1-0 in the fall. Head coach Karen Hoppe commented on the win, saying, I'm really proud of them. Last fall, we felt like we got, one got away from us at home against Alabama, and the girls really wanted to have this opportunity to have a second chance. I was proud of them. They made the most of it. We scored two terrific goals, and that's what you need to win to do to win on the road in the SEC. The two Tiger goals came from Sydney Richards and Haley Whitaker. Richards' goal came in the 17th minute of the match when a corner kick bounced around the top of the box and Richards controlled the ball and scored in the lower left corner of the net. It was Richards' team-high fifth goal of the season. The second goal came in the second half from Whitaker, who took a pass from Anna Haddock and scored into the side netting for her first goal of the season. Once again, the Tigers' defense was able to hold down the back of the field, with the defensive freshman goalkeeper Maddie Prohaska allowing just one shot. Anna Haddock led the offensive front for the Tigers, taking six shots, with three of them being on target and assisting one goal. Sydney Richards was, cl was close behind with three shots. Midfielder Haley Whitaker commented on the win saying, we had just been, we had just been missing some key points and I think to to today we kind of put it together. We really connected better than we had this whole season, so I'm really excited to see where we go from here. Auburn has now won 13 of the last 16 contests in Alabama and has now won five straight in Tuscaloosa. Because of her strong performance against the Tide, Haley Whitaker has been named Top Jar Soccer Team of the Week Honorable Mention. Her recognition marks the third straight week an Auburn player has been honored by Top Jar Soccer, with Sarah Halkin being recognized last week and Maddie Prohaska the week before. Whitaker and the Tigers return back to the Auburn so Soccer Complex this Saturday, where they will host Te South Alabama at 1 p.m. The number one equestrian team brought home its third straight SEC title this weekend after defeating Georgia 15-5. The championship is the team's fourth in the SEC and seventh overall. Their three previous conference crowns came from the Southern Equestrian Conference in 2004, 2010, and 2011. The win moved the Tigers to 8-0 on the season and advanced their winning streak to 42 straight meets. The last loss of the program was at the 2018 SEC Championship. Head coach Greg Williams said, This team has been an amazing team, and I can't talk about them enough. They've continually just handled whatever adversity is thrown at them. The staff that I have here and coaches Mary Menelly and Jessica Braswell have worked hard to get this team prepared. We're going to celebrate this a little bit and then get back to work for Nationals. A pair of Tigers in, in senior Taylor St. Jacques and sophomore Boo Kammerer were placed on the SEC All-Championship team. St. Jacques earned her spot for her performances on flat over the weekend, while Kammerer's 2-0-0 finish secured her place on the league team. Auburn looks to close out the season with another trophy as the team will head to Waco, Texas for the 2021 National Collegiate Equestrian Association Championship. The three-day meet will be held April 15th through 17th in the Extraco Event Center. The Auburn Equestrian team earned the top seed for the 2021 NCEA Championship. Auburn's quest for its third straight national title starts Wednesday, April 15th, as the Tigers face number eight Baylor. Fellow Southeastern Conference opponents Georgia and Texas A&M are seeded number four and number five. Since the first NCEA team national championship in 2002, Auburn and Georgia have won the most titles with, with six each. South Carolina and Texas A&M have three apiece. 
The 2020 NCEA championship was not held because of COVID-19 and a regular season national champion was not named. For updates regarding the NCEA championship, follow the Auburn Equestrian Twitter at Auburn EQ. Darian Goborn has just recently added another honor to her list of accolades as she was named the Women's Collegiate Gymnastics Association All-American. This is her second straight yearly recognition from the WCGA and the third year with an All-American honor. Goborn was also named SEC Co-Specialist of the Year and finished the year with a national qualifying score of 9.956 on the floor. The Auburn Gymnastics team will not compete at the 2021 NCAA Tuscaloosa Regional Championship this weekend due to positive COVID-19 tests and contact tracing within the, within the program. The action is consistent with COVID-19 management requirements put forth by the NCAA and the Southeastern Conference. The 17th ranked Auburn women's tennis team finished off the weekend undefeated with a 4-1 win over Missouri. The win was the team's seventh SEC win of the season. Auburn won the doubles point early and played the strong singles matches to pick up their third consecutive road win. Auburn will play its final two home matches of the regular season next weekend, hosting Texas A&M at 3 p.m. on Thursday and LSU at noon on Saturday. When we come back, we'll take a look at the schedule this weekend in Auburn sports. Keep it right here. You're watching Sports Night in Auburn. The weekend in Auburn Athletics kicks off on Thursday afternoon as baseball and softball both take on Arkansas. Baseball will travel to Fayetteville for a three-game series with Game 1 being at 6.30 on Thursday, Game 2 being at 6.30 on Friday, and the series finale at 2 p.m. on Saturday. Softball hosts Arkansas at J.B. Moore Field for a three-game series this weekend with Game 1 being Thursday at 5, Game 2 Friday at noon, and Game 3 Saturday at 1. Thursday's game will be on SEC Network Plus, while Friday and Saturday's games will broadcast nationally on SEC Network. Auburn Soccer will play their last home game of the season Saturday as they host South Alabama at 1 p.m. at the Auburn Soccer Complex. The Tigers are currently on a three-game winning streak and look to make it four in their final home contest of the 2020-21 season. That's all we have for you tonight, but for more Auburn sports, follow our Twitter at EETV underscore sports and check out our website at eagleyeauburn.com. I'm Mackenzie Collins. And I'm Brandon McLaughlin. Good night and War Eagle.